Now let's go to main register, right? We are done with the power device. We have very tight schedule. I give you a feeling. I hope that you can keep paying attention. It's very hot now that you are okay. Now let's go to the layout. We have learned the resistive memory device already, right? I won't go to more device physics, right? We won't learn the equation. It's all up to you. You learn, you have all the basics already, right? If you want to learn more, read the paper or come to me. That's it for the device physics because we have many things to learn. But there's one thing very important. How do you put them together, right? Nowadays, we all talk about DTCO. You cannot just think as a device engineer. You need to think your customer who are the circuit designer how your device is going to be useful if they cannot use it, okay? Now, first of all, how do we lay out the resistive memory? You see that it is very, very easy. I just put a top metal here. For example, this is top electron. I do it in a vertical row, column, right? And then I put the bottom electron horizontally and in between them if you try to do a 3d wheel you see something like this my drawing is bad top electro right top electro It's difficult to draw on the screen, bottom electron. And what we have is this. You just put half mem dioxide here. You get it? So I have one device already. I just crossed the metal. Right, of course I ensure below the metal it is half limb dioxide. I get one device. How many device can I get? We usually will talk about the form factor of any memory. One of them, for example, here say that it is four F square. What does it mean? Of course I can make my memory denser if I have smaller feature size, right? We talk about 100 nanometer, 90 nanometer, 65, 10 nanometer. So if I can make it small, of course that is good. But different technology have different equation. For example, how much area do I need in order to put one resistive memory if my feature size is F? So here show you that this is F. So this is also F, right? Or this is 2F. So basically one, effectively one cell is occupying two, uh, 2F by 2F. So that's why we have 4F square. I mean, why this is important, think about this. If my F is 10 nanometer, then what is my area? Then my area is four times 100 nanometer square equal to 400 nanometer square. What if I improve my technology to one nanometer? Difficult, but this is the goal, right? In the future, maybe 20 years later, right? If it's still working, one nanometer, then my area is equal to four times one nanometer, which is equal to four nanometer. It basically saying that if I were able to make one gigabyte of memory at 10 nanometer, I am able to make 100 gigabyte at four nanometer, right? But actually what does it mean? Let's take a estimation. If you have a, one cm square of area and your feature size is four nanometer square, right? I mean, I mean the, the area. So what is this? This is 10 to the power negative 18. I mean, 18 nanometer square divided by four, right? So I really don't know how many bytes this is, right? 2.5 is 17. 
One giga is 10 to the power nine. One tera is 10 to the power 12. One peta is 10 to the power 15. So here is talking about 100 peta. 100 peta bits of memory in one CM square. Of course, everything is ideal, right? Decoder, other things. But this one tells us that, man, there's a possibility. Nowadays, we don't have enough memory. But imagine in the future, I give you something like the USB from drive you have nowadays, you plug in, it gives you one pattern byte of memory. Basically, it can record every movie you are doing every day, maybe for many years, and very fast, long volatile, and re high retention time, uh, long retention time, and also uh, multiple writing, right? Uh, what what we call what we call endurance is high. That would be perfect. You cannot do this with SRAM. You cannot do SRAM to this form factor. It's not two F square, four F square. I forgot what it is, because you have six cell, six cells for SRAM, and it's not volatile, and it's expensive. This is a, such a simple process, just three layers, right? That's why this attracts so much attention, not, not to mention that it can be used for neuromorphic computing. We are going to talk later, right? Of course, this is just ideal, right? But even I can realize 1% of this, which is one petabyte, isn't that great? That's why this is a very important business, right? So this is cool, but then what does it mean? How are we going to lay out? We lay out in this way, then it means this is at the top electro. If I want to read certain of them, this is the bottom electro, right? It really doesn't matter how we call it, but you see that we have the resistor here. Why I have R11? This is just talking about this red, piece of thing because top and bottom are not connected so it's not connected each cross over they are connected through this half lium dioxide and depends on whether we program it or we erase it they have different resistance so i want you to see this picture a very simple picture about resistive memory is that any questions But simplicity is giving us problem. What happened? Now, some of you might start finding some problem. Hey, you're connecting everything together. Now, if I want to read, for example, R23, uh, I'm going to put a high voltage. Let's say put five. Uh, I'm talking about right. Let me just say three volt. Then I put zero volt. Make sense? Right, so I put three volts then, isn't that I'm going to have current going through from here to here? Everyone agree? Yeah. But what I'm going to do with others, right? How should I bias this? Right, one possibility is that, what if I put this as zero? Then what will happen? I actually going to have leakage current going through here. But that's okay. The first thing, of course, you say it really doesn't matter because this, because at this stage this is free volt. I am still writing. I'm still writing, right? I'm still writing this cell, right? And here, you have a lot of current going through. Uh, you just uh, waste a lot of, uh, you, know, you are going to write other cell also, right? So there will be a problem of how we are going to address a cell 
by by this because you see clearly that I have other cell being written. Okay. Of course, then you may say, well, what if I put free vote here? Then looks like this part is okay. But then how about this cell? I'm writing this cell again or erase, re erasing this cell. Okay, so this is the problem we need to think about. We call it sneaking path or crosstalk issue. Just like right here, another example, this is about reading. I want to read this cell. This is my goal to read this cell. So I want to apply voltage here and measure the current. Then I know whether it's high resistive state or low resistive state. What if this is high resistive state? Do I get high current or small current? Can someone tell me when this is high resistive? Slow current. Small current, right? Because it's very resistive, right? Small. But what if at this moment, these three cells, I store some zero or one. They are at low resistive state. Well, you are so resistive, but I do find another path. Go through here, go down, go up, go down, and to here. This one can be large. Then what I'm reading, right? This is this one, the red, right? It's free, low resistive state. And then this is the high resistive state. Then you screw up my reading. I expect to read high resistance, which is low current, and somehow I get pretty large resistance, my pretty large current, although it might not be very large, but it reduced my noise margin. Okay, so this is called sneaky snip path. Okay. Right? So these are the issues we need to solve if you want to use the memory. How do we solve it? So there are a few things. First, about the write operation. So for example, if I want to write a certain element, okay? In this particular case, I'm actually trying to write this. Or let me call it right target. So I apply three here. Do you see that? We let me call it just V W, not three. And then I apply zero to here, right? It's C letter again, again, or already, correct? This is zero. This is high voltage. Then I'm going to write this one. No problem. But how about for others? We use the so-called half voltage potential scheme. Look at this, for other rows and columns, we only apply the half voltage. So what does it mean? Let's just trace it, right? It's messy, but it's easy for you. You know that. This is just uh, as simple as elementary school can do that. All you need to do just, okay, what is this? We apply half to them, so this is half VW. Bottom is half VW. What is the difference between top and bottom? What is the voltage across this resistor? One VW. I, I mean the difference, voltage across it. Zero. Yes, very good, right? So zero VD. Uh, let me don't say VD, right? Just zero voltage across it. So for all the 
all the device outside what I want to write. For example, here I want to write this one. This is the target, right? This is pretty nice picture. For all this outside, they have delta V equal to zero. So you are not touching them. No problem. The only problem is here. This is VW, but this guy is half VW. So what is the voltage across it? Half, negative half VW? Yes, yeah. It can be negative or uh, positive, depends on how we define. I did not define, let's just use absolute value. Negative half W. So for the same row or same column, Right. Let me use orange because they use orange here, right? This, 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 they all get half VW because the top is half VW, bottom is zero. Here the top is VW, bottom is half VW. Is that a problem? What do you think? I mean, you're still going to have a leak current or a sneak current. Exactly. We still have a problem. But why people so proud of that and it becomes a scheme? That is because of the characteristic of the resistive memory. Do you remember the IV curve? This is the voltage. This is I. And this is in log scale. And you have something like this. This may be, let's say, 1e minus 9. This may be 1e minus 3. And this may be 1e minus 6. You need VW to write it, OK? But for half VW, your current reduces exponentially. OK, or actually, I should say that this one is written when it is 1.5 volt. I cannot write it at 1 volt or even 0 0.75 volt. I do get some leakage, but it's not enough for me to form the train of reaction of the vacancy. Right? Because it's an exponential feature. Before I go to break down, right? It's just like a rubber, rubber, a ruler, right? You bend it. Eventually, a certain force, it break. Everything is gone. But if you only apply half the breaking force, it doesn't change the ruler at all. Yeah, you start inducing some stress, some fatigue. But really, you can do that for one million times, and it still doesn't break. And that is the idea. Although I am applying half VW, if you talk about current, it can be 1 million times, 1,000 times smaller. So not a very big problem, unless your array is very big. So this is a concern, right? Just now I claim that I can do 10 petabytes. No way. If you try to have this uh, so long, just the leakage is enough to kill you, right? So we actually need to partition it. Another thing is that, how about the reliability? You are trying to write me. Yeah, but you're only writing me with half of the writing voltage. Due to the exponential feature, I don't change by half. I actually only change very tiny. Maybe you try to do it for 1 million times, you can fit my state, but not for 10 times or 100 times. So this is the very important thing, right? Programming speed is exponentially proportional to weak. So maybe I spend 10 nanoseconds, I can program this one, but I might need to wait for 100 seconds to program this one. But I'm not going to put 100 seconds of V over two on this resistor. So no problem, yeah. Problem is there just like what you see, you still have leakage, still have some tiny programming, but for practical purpose, maybe this is good. Like memory is something really uh, interesting. They, they are not perfect, even for fresh, right? 
If you fill that up to 10,000 times, 1 million times of writing, you will have problem. Then you can just refresh it, right? You see it's degrading. Well, after you use your uh, uh, memory for one month, it automatically just copy and then refresh everything. Then you can continue. As long as, as it doesn't have to refresh every second or every millisecond, then it's still a usable product. Is this clear about this uh, scheme? Professor Kenridge, I'm not able to understand it properly. Sure, yeah, thank you for asking, right? So what I'm trying to, uh, first, first, now stop me. Uh, okay, no, let me just keep going. First of all, we, we apply a right voltage. You want to write it. It means you want to either erase or write. You want to have a large voltage to form this continuous train of vacancy. Make sense? Yes. And you need to a large negative voltage to break this filament, right? Yeah. Before the voltage is large enough, you actually cannot form the whole train. You may increase one vacancy, but it's not enough to change your state. That is the idea. So what we do here is, okay, you have a right voltage. I want to write this one. I put VW and I put ground here so I can write it, no problem, because this is a large voltage. For others, I put only half. What happened? For those outside this row and column, I have half on top, half VW on bottom. So there's no potential difference, right? Two volt minus two volt is zero volt. So I'm not changing this device and there's no leakage current. Is this okay? Yeah. Okay. But how about for the same row and same column? Well, the top is VW. The bottom is half VW, right? So the difference across them is half VW. And as some, some of you said, that's still a problem. That is true. But the problem is small because first, in terms of leakage, I reduce the voltage by half, the current actually reduced more than 10,000 times. So it is tiny. And in terms of pro, uh, programming, am I going to program this? Yes, you will change a little bit. But just as we said earlier, you have low voltage, you only increase the vacancy by a little bit or reduce it by a little bit. So it is still in the original state. So that's why it's not a problem. Is this okay? Mm, yes, Professor. A uh, small doubt, uh, if you don't mind, Professor. No, no say again. Well, I have a doubt. Uh, but, for the yeah. same row and same column, the uh -huh. column said, uh, half a VW, half VW, right? Yeah. So basically, we are trying to create a zero volt uh, across that junction so that we can write over it. Is that what we mean? You mean here? here? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you yeah. explain? So here you, 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 no, here I mean the difference is zero. Difference is zero, right? The difference across the, the device is zero. It's just that you don't apply any voltage to my device. So uh, you are not erasing or you are not changing my state. Okay. Professor, if we, I, I have to write that, that, uh, um, that memory location, then uh, how would I write? Because where is the zero? Oh, uh, if you want to write at this location, you just imagine this is like this. This one is actually a infinite array. So then I need to make this one to be VW, this one to be zero. And then oh, the rest will be half VW. Oh, okay, Professor. Yeah. Th that's what was confusing me. I see, I see, I see. Thank you. So, Whatever you want to write, you put V and zero across it. Then you only have one point that is V and zero. For the rest, you either have difference equal to zero or difference equal to half V W. And this is very nice. You can select a device by just applying the voltage. Okay. Any other questions?
Yeah, thank you for asking, right? I, I, although I know some people understand, but I don't think all of us understand thoroughly, right? Because for me, also take a long time to understand, really, right? This is a new stuff, right? And you cannot learn this from textbook. There are no textbook really explained to you clearly. How about for reading? What is the best way to read? Now here I show an example. This is the card target, okay? Read this cell. My goal is want to know. What do I mean by read? It means I want to know whether it's H high resistance state or low resistance state. And of course the goal is to measure the current by measuring the current, right? So I know that I want to read these cells. So I put V out, a high voltage on top. And then here I try to grind it and measure. I have a device to sense the current. If I get high current, then I say, okay, this is a high, uh, low resistance state. If I got low current, then I know this is low resistance. Then I get zero or one. Okay, is this scenario clear? Now the problem is this. Oh, this is the problem, right? What if, let's say, assume this is high resistance state. Okay, and then we assume, I just repeat what I mentioned earlier, but what I mentioned earlier probably is not clear to you. Here, I just try to make it clear. What if the cells next to it are low resistance state? Then what will happen? Well, if I grant this one, this is zero volt. This is zero volt. That is perfect, right? Just think about this. Is there any current, right? If this is zero, any current going through First, first of all, I don't care the current here, right? Because I want to measure this one, right? So any current co contributing by this one. Yeah. Why? Uh, because it's tied to the zero volts. It's tied to the zero volt here. And how about here? Here is also zero volt. Do not forget. Yeah, so it should go both directions. If you have a zero volt potential across it, right? There should be no current, right? You apply a right. zero volt across a resistor. Yeah, but I mean, can it not go to... So going from VR to the top yeah. left, mm -hmm. down yeah. to the resistor and back up. But this is a resistor and this is zero volt. When I say this is zero volt, this is zero volt. Then it means there's no potential drop, right? I know why you say that. I also got confused very often. I equal to V over R. So are you are you turning off? So you, so you're so you're pretty much turning off those those lines, right? Yeah. You're I, not grounding I, them. I ground them. I ground them. So can current not go the other way? Let's just use Ohm's law. Can it go to other way? What yeah. is V here? What is V here? This is oh. zero volts. Right, this is zero volt. Right, the top zero. node. Yep, so the difference is zero, correct? Yeah, oh, I see, I see, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. No, 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 sorry. You, you actually raise a very important thing, right? I want to go through this because once this is clear, the rest will be clear. Yes. Yep. And then you're yeah, out. It's, it's easier to go through the wire, right? Yes, exactly. Yes. It's easier to go through the wire. Yeah. Right. So there's no current, right? Right. So looks like no problem. Indeed, there's no problem. But only ideal if the parasitic resistance can be ignored. So what happened? The wire itself has resistance. Mm -hmm. You are talking about a long array, right? I promise you that we'll have this fancy picture in the future. 
that I have one petabyte of memory. So it means over a train, I have almost one cm long of wire and it is very narrow. So you do have a resistance. Then what does it mean? In reality, because of the potential drop, yeah, maybe this is five volt. This one may be only 4.9. This one become four, oh, no, no, sorry. This is large resistance. So this may be 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and then zero. Do you see this? There will be potential drop. And then now you are right. Just now you told me that the current can go up, right? If this is low resistance state, the current can go in this direction. Because this is 0 0.1 volt, it's not exactly zero volt. Right? So here shows one of the possibility. It's still away the current. Well, I mean, but you, you still have a leakage in the in the upper two, right? In the upper two, which upper two? You mean uh, this two? The top row, the full, yeah. Uh, this two you still have, but I don't care because my goal is to measure the current here. Yeah, this one right. means my energy, but it doesn't affect my measurement. Is it an order of magnitude of a difference? Which one orders of magnitude? The, the current. Which current? Uh, with low low versus high? Yes. Okay. It's orders of magnitude. Look at this. Okay. Right? Yeah. This is on state. This is off state. Right? Yeah. Okay. Now, but this is five. Oh, this is five volt. This is only 0.1 volt. But because there's orders of magnitude of difference, this current can be comparable or even larger than this one. Okay, and here comes, right. uh -huh. like, so so when when reading, you can really just do it mathematically, just, what, just by looking at how much current you have. Pretty much, it just very very clearly, far easier than writing. Uh yeah yeah yeah. Just just look at how much current it has. You are right. But but then all this thing is uh, giving me noise, right? And then now we go to the sneaking path. Again, if this is five, this one may be 0 0.3. Oh, no, no. Right? This one can be 0 4.8, right? Because this is five. Okay. So the current can go from here. Come here, go up, and then go here, go down, right? It can go this way. And then this is going to add up and then screw me up, right? This one reduce me for number one, it just reduce the current go to the sense amplifier. That is okay because I'm high resistance there. You make it higher, I still know it is high. But this one try to contribute some more uh, current to me. Then I may think that it is low resistive state. Is this okay? Right, so this is the uh, very messy thing yes yeah so that's why simulation will help right um so as a circuit designer actually so as circuit designer circuit design is actually all very difficult with this also so just pay attention to this pay attention to this right i bring this to you and i hope that you're aware of this Right. Do, what's the like the order of magnitude like uh, between the wire and the resistor it right how, how much is the difference resistance yeah like the the a segment of wire versus a segment of the resistor oh in terms of salmon it's not much 
Uh, in terms of salmon, it's a lot for high resistive state to the low resistive state. But we are talking about a very long wire, right? Think about if right. you have one megabit, then you have 1,000 salmon. If you're talking one gigabit, then it is talking about 3,000 salmon. Right. I mean, we, we, we can make ultra wide wires, right? Ultra wide highways. Yep. But then now you make this Y then your F is going to be large. You, you, you lose the benefit. But then just, you know, neck it. Hmm? Uh, okay, it's not easy. When you're talking about a few nanometer, you want to neck it, you cannot print it easily. Yeah, you can do it uh, for large feature, but nowadays, how do you print 10 nanometer? You really need to rely them to be on uniform. You cannot print them. You nick it, then you are going to have defect, broken wire or shorter wire somewhere. Is this, is this one, is this one uh, manufactured through deposition? This one can be different things, uh, but, but the point is you need to etch them eventually, whether you use deposition or whatever, right? You need to etch so that this top electro is not in contact with another top electro. You need to separate them. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I guess I'm, I'm trying to figure out. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I guess I, I don't know what what the limitations are for 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 the etching resolution. So I, I don't know. It's not the etching. It's the printing. You need to print photoresist to etch them. Yeah, etching can be right, etching, but mostly printing. You need to start printing photoresist to protect this knife, and then you etch those in between. How can you print it so that they don't shot together? Don't take it for granted because you're talking about 10 nanometer. Yeah, photoresist is not easy to, uh, that's, I, I, don't know, I don't know how they would do it with 10 nanometer. You cannot, they rely on something. I think I kind of mentioned at the beginning, pattern edge, pattern edge, quadruple patterning or whatever. A lot of very special for this minimum feature size, they, of course, use maybe extreme wildlife nights, very expensive tools, hundreds of million. And at the same time, they need to go through many steps, very expensive steps to, uh, to ensure the you, right? Because you give me a one gigabyte array, but you only need to short one of them to make the whole thing fail. Yeah, of course, we have redundancy and other things to increase the you, but in the simplest sense, just one shotting. And you're talking about your printing one trillion junction. And you don't even allow me to short one, right? Think about you build one trillion road cross road junction and you don't allow one of the traffic light to fail. That is even impossible in this large scale. Uh, yeah, but what you're saying is good, right? Think about maybe you can come up with a pattern you say, okay, I'm going to short it. If you think of a way to do this, you can have a pattern on that. And if it works, you, you will earn a lot of money. Okay. I'm saying serious thing. I'm not trying to say now I, I cannot persuade you and say something like this. And this is exactly what the industry is doing. Every day generates tons of pattern just because they think of something that can help the improvement, right? Samsung, TSMC, IBM, and they generate this so that they can do that. So this is a, a huge, a very uh, profitable area if you have some good idea. Okay, any questions? Right, but you, you, this discussion is really good, right? Because you can only ask this question when you understand what I'm talking about. And you only can propose all this night nick uh, uh, wire, right? When you understand what this is about. Now, and I also to tell you that uh, there is the capacitance issue. If you make it large, we did not discuss this capacitance. Capacitance can be large, then you are slow, right? So there's a lot of trade off.
Any other questions? Here, yeah, just repeat what I just said. Actually, uh, maybe let me erase. I'm a little bit too fast in when I was discussing, right? So here, I just give you one case. Let me erase the purple one. This is the second situation, right? About this nicking path when this is off state, right? This is situation two. But right? here to tell you that, uh, and actually here I mean slice 14 because I have changed the slice number. Okay, so this is just another illustration. Okay, so even we have a very nice writing scheme, we still have some problem, but we solve it a little bit. Now we also have a good reading scheme, but still we have the sneaking path or sneak path. So what is the best solution? The best solution is put a C letter, but not good. If you put C letter, it means you need more area, 